there is undeniably human impact um, on temperatures, on rainfall, on ecosystems. And the way I see it is if we aren't even making a detrimental effect, what's the harm in being better people and looking after the environment a little bit better? We're in Beaver Creek Estate, 80 meters above sea level, which is incredibly uh, weird for coffee. It's a, it's a tropical crop that shouldn't be planted outside the tropics, but it works really well here. Um, they've sort of compensated for the altitude by latitude, so we've moved further south, and therefore it's a little bit cooler. Lower altitude should be a little bit warmer, but it perfectly balances out. In the early 80s, my father and grandfather bought this farm. It was totally under bananas. And as an experiment in one of our plantations, because of a, a banana disease, uh, we tried coffee and it did very well. So we've always known uh, that rainfall temperature are really important for, for coffee. Our latest research has shown that actually temperatures are one of the most important factors impacting the crop. And it's not just daytime temperatures. So if you look at, you know, serious heat throughout the day, it appears that the plants can actually adapt to this heat. It's, it's really the nighttime temperatures that are causing the biggest impact. So uh, yeah, these slowly increasing uh, minimum temperatures throughout the evenings, um, causing metabolic problems within the, within the plant and causing lower yields. If you look at um, the change per decade, it's huge. It's almost a degree Celsius per decade. If we look at that in terms of East Africa and Tanzania, a change this big will be a loss of about 137 kilos per hectare, almost 150 kilos per hectare, which for a farmer is about half his crop per year, which is you know, a massive impact if you wait the entire year for one coffee crop uh, to give you your income. Um, that's a pretty sad story. So we've set up a number of data loggers throughout East Africa over an altitude range ranging from here at 80 meters above sea level all the way to 2,300 meters above sea level um, on different estates, different farms, uh, different smallholder plots. And we're looking at what those temperatures are doing. And we've been doing this for the last uh, couple of years. And uh, it appears that the best thing to do would be shade. So it's a simple, uh, natural thing. Farmers can get in a couple plants, it'll decrease the daytime temperatures, which is a bonus, and it'll uh, keep out that heat. For a long time, um, the idea of shade growing coffee to me was kind of, a, in, in some respects, a, you know, a good thing, but in some respects, a lot of marketing. When Alessandro came back, we had a walk around the farm and we started discussing this shade thing and the importance of and what it has effect on coffee. The one thing that was common was the fact that it uh, was all under shade. I studied uh, through WITS, I'm still studying my PhD through WITS. Yeah, and it's a, it's a fascination with all plants. So we look at coffee, um, how it's reacting to the, to the environment, climate change, temperatures and rainfall throughout the, throughout the world. The international interaction, networking, it's all incredibly important for, for research. So it was actually interesting to have Sandro arrive um, because he opened up a whole new understanding and interest for myself um, on coffee farming and effect of uh, temperature on that. It's a, it's a drive to, to essentially do justice to the bean. So if you've got some beautiful coffee growing out in uh, a secluded part of Ethiopia, that's where I am. And I'm always chasing down the most secluded, rarest bean taken on donkey cart from here to the next town and I try and get that. I'll then look at the region where it's grown, roast it accordingly and really try and yeah, give it the best taste it, it can get.